Good morning. Yesterday we briefly talked about um, methane molecule as a three-dimensional perspective. Today we shall go into some more details about the um, stereochemical aspect of uh, carbon which has formed all single bonds. Before that let us quickly review what we have done yesterday. If you remember uh, we have talked about methane as a textbook representation then we said this is the perspective formula and these are the conventions please. Conventions like what? A wet shape which indicate that particular bond is towards the viewer. A dotted line the bond is away and a simple line means uh, it is in the plane of reference and always carbon forms part of the plane of reference here. Hmm? And we can represent the same molecule in different perspective formula depending upon how we are viewing that particular molecule. Then we talked about the carbon with uh, four different bonds, four different groups or atoms attached and that carbon we have called as a chiral carbon. And the importance of the chiral carbon is we can expect one more molecule with the same formula, with the same type of attachment and it should be a sort of mirror image for the original molecule, or the molecule we have taken and both these molecules uh, if you try to superimpose they don't get superimposed that means they have independent existence so the only point is they enjoy mirror image relationship and there ends our familiarity our mirror image relationship of human beings is uh, you are clear is it not the image disappears the moment you move away from the mirror so these uh, mirror image molecules which are non superimposable are called as enantiomers and we shall go into some more details at a later stage as and when it comes here. And coming to today's program, we shall take now a second example that is ethane molecule C2H6. Now, this is the formula, for example. If you watch out this, what I have written above that is ethane molecule C2H6, or otherwise I can write it as CH3, CH3 or H, 3C, and CH3 because the focus is on C single bond C. So let us again take the assistance of uh, molecular models to understand the speciality of the next molecule ethane. This is my molecule for example if you watch out here. Again the black spheres are carbons, white is hydrogens and this is the bond between them. Now if you watch out very interesting, uh, suppose earlier if you remember this position which I am holding in my hand was occupied by a white sphere that was a methane molecule. Now that hydrogen I have replaced by a CH3 group, CH3 group. That means the difference in the first form and the second form is CH2. So I am going to build up series of molecules which differ in a very steady way in the molecular increment of CH2, CH2. Suppose if I take C2H6 now, if I add one more CH2, I get the next member that is propane, one more butane, etc. So we are dealing with um, a homologous series of alkane molecules. Now this is my second member. What is the importance of this? If you watch out, I am holding one of the carbons and I try to rotate. I think it is rotating fairly simple. I, I Can I use my little finger? Yeah, even then it is possible. What does it mean? It means uh, this does not give you a lot of strength unlike the thumb. In spite of that if I am able to rotate, if I am able to rotate, it means the C single bond C rotation does not require a lot of energy. If that is the case, we can always expect a molecule of this nature. This bond is continuously rotating, continuously rotating. You see, once we write on the blackboard C2H6 formula, it looks fixed, rigid. But the reality is something fascinating. These molecules are lively. There appears to be some CC bond rotation. CC bond means C single bond rotation. How did we prove that? With the help of this tetrahedral model, each carbon is a tetrahedral center, this carbon is a tetrahedral center, and using little finger, I think it is moving continuously. Now, what has that movement to do with the next development of stereochemistry? Let us uh, probe that idea. Now, if this is the case, I want to see the notation or the, the way we write the formula does not indicate the reality about CC bond rotation. So we have couple of conventions developed. 
let me try that before I show it again. For example, this uh, I want to view this molecule. What is this molecule? Already we have seen that this is C2H6. I am viewing this molecule from a slant angle. Suppose imagine if I am keeping it like this. For example, like this. But do you understand what is the meaning of slant angle? Now if I view the molecule like this, I think this line is visible for you. Let me try this again. Yeah, this line is visible for you. Yeah. Now if this is rotating, I think hydrogens are occupying relatively different positions. Different positions. This is a continuous process. Therefore, uh, writing one structure does not indicate the reality about C2H6 molecule. I am again talking about this. I take a molecule. I want to view it differently. Suppose if I am viewing like this. Do you see that line there? This is the line I was referring to. If I focus on this line and if one of the bonds, one of the carbons I am holding steadily, other if I am rotating, I realizing these hydrogens on adjacent carbons, these two hydrogens for example, on adjacent carbons, they relatively occupy different locations. Let us go back again. Suppose if I am viewing the molecule like this. I am the viewer. If that is the case, if I am viewing from the slant angle, they are one behind the other. Are you watching or they are one behind the other? They are one behind the other. They are one behind the other. All three of them. This is the first standard location I am taking here. And by the time we realize they are one behind the other, let us say they are eclipsing each other, I realize this bond moves. Where is the energy for this coming? What all energy that is there in the room that is enough? It doesn't require huge amount of energy. Let us go back again. Suppose if you view the molecule like this. Are you realizing they are one behind the other? True. These two hydrogens I am holding here. I am showing these angles. They are one behind the other. See what is true for this is also true. And so is the case. This is also true. Suppose I am holding the back one and I will rotate the front one like this. I can. It is a continuous rotation place. Suppose if I view the molecule like this. I think are you able to follow that point. The relative uh, locations of hydrogen atoms are different. I am again showing it, try to follow clearly. Suppose if I keep it like this, I think in, we can see all the six hydrogens there. We can see all the six hydrogens. And if I move like this by about 60 degrees angle or so, I think they are one behind the other. True. Therefore, by convention, we try to draw different structures which are with the bond rotation by about 60 degrees and try to draw the corresponding structure. It looks like that. And here we develop two types of uh, representations such that I can indicate the flexibility of the structure that I am writing here. It is a continuous rotation place. It does not stop. It is a continuous rotation. Only thing is that for the sake of study, we try to stop at a particular stage normally at 60 degrees centigrade and try to find out how do we write that particular structure. So the different uh, representations that are possible consequent to CC bond rotation are called as conformers. Conformers. So, there are different conventions here. We follow two of them. One of them is called as sawhorse formula. Other is called as Newman projection. Newman. N-E-W-M-E-N-N. -E -N -N. So, I will show those representations. This is what we have here on the paper. This is the first one, please. Now, are you watching out? I have written here, this is called as a sawhorse formula. Now here if you watch out, I am viewing the molecule, you can make out something along with the arrow mark. This is the arrow mark I am referring to. I am, this is the viewer and is viewing the molecule. The, I, if you focus on the top hydrogen, they are one behind the other, so are the other hydrogens. For the sake of our clarity, I am indicating some hydrogens surrounded by triangular mark, some with a circular mark some left without any boundary for that. That means in this eclipsed form, hydrogens which are enclosed in a triangle, they are one behind the other. If they are enclosed in a circle, they are one behind the other. This is what is called as an eclipsed conformer of ethane. Proceed further. Can you see I am rotating the bond by about 60 degrees? Now if you watch out, I think I am able to see all the six hydrogens now. Six hydrogens. This is what is normally called as, to start with, we can call them as non-eclipsed form or still better, staggered form. Staggered form. Broadly, I have written two forms. There may be many other forms also, depending upon how many carbons we are having here. As a matter of fact, 
it must be clear by this time the conformers i am writing are always between adjacent carbon atoms adjacent carbon atoms so going back our ethane molecule ch3 ch3 it, this is one form rotation by about 60 degrees centigrade it moves to staggered form again by 60 degrees it moves back to again eclipsed form it is a continuous process continuous process this kind of representation wherein we are viewing the molecule from a slant angle is called as sawhorse so formula i have written there sawhorse so formula there is one more wherein we are viewing the molecule head on exactly in front of me i mean this is this is the situation exactly in front i keep it like this so this also i will be able to represent suppose if i am holding one of them what towards me that carbon is fixed and if i move the other one i think i am able to see all the six point to point i can see all the six of them is it clear for you so that eclipsed and staggered i can as well show if i am viewing the molecule head on exactly uh, my eyesight is uh, in line with the cc bond and that kind of representation is called as newman projection let me show you that also this is my newman projection what i have written here you can say circle and that circle indicates the carbon away from us and there is inside the circle at y shaped alphabetic you see that is the carbon towards us there are three hydrogens and the other three are actually not visible but because we are talking about uh, something uh, we must be able to visualize there so i have slightly took them ajar so you can see three hydrogens with a shorter line they are one behind the if they rotate i am getting a non eclipse or staggered form this kind of representation with the circle and on the boundary from the periphery we are pull out and write down three hydrogens or from the center of the circle we pull out and write down three hydrogens here this kind of representation wherein the viewer is in line with the cc bond is called as a newman projection earlier one where i am viewing the molecule from a slant angle they are called as staggered conformers staggered con this are two representations no normally the textbook representation is like this this is my third one this also is very important for us now for example this is what you encounter what i'm showing here two carbons three hydrogens the first carbon and three hydrogens below carbon therefore this is one representation already we are aware we have seen with the help of methane molecule it is not possible it molecule cannot be planar and this kind of representation is very very commonly seen in a textbook where carbons are written in one row hydrogens are whatever atoms are there that are attached to the flanks this kind of representation remember how do we appreciate stereochemically this how this means does it correspond eclipsed whatever it is here we want to know that this kind of writing is called as a fisher fisher projection f i s c h e r fisher now the way i have written remember it corresponds exactly the perspective formula i am showing you that means the topmost hydrogen and the bottom hydrogen if you watch out i have indicated with the help of a dotted line that means they are away from the viewer whereas hydrogens to the left and right for example these hydrogens these two hydrogens and these two hydrogens here just watch out this is equal to each other they are indicated with a wedge shape line that means these two hydrogens are on each of the carbons is towards us therefore there are four such hydrogens which are projecting towards the viewer and two hydrogens one top and one bottom which are indicated by dotted line they are away from the viewer therefore whenever you encounter a notation like this you must clearly follow it indicates how they are oriented suppose tomorrow i am taking a big size molecule like glucose with six carbons and if i hold it in a row six carbons the topmost carbon and the bottom carbon what groups are attached here they are away from the viewer and rest of the hydrogens that are there they are towards the viewer of course we'll talk once we come to carbohydrate chemistry about fisher projection formula but fisher projection formula is a rigid conformer you cannot have any variations there but number of instances are there where we do require information especially when we are talking about reaction mechanisms how the bonds are oriented in a three dimensional space are they eclipsed or are they staggered or some other form of staggered like gauche etc we'll talk in future so the second molecule ethane that we have just not talked 
this is the molecule. So this CC bond get convinced about this, this convinced. This does not require much energy. It can easily rotate. So how do we represent? How do we represent if they are moving like this? The relative locations of two hydrogen atoms on adjacent carbons. Adjacent carbons. This is very, very important. Therefore, the different representations that are possible consequent to CC bond rotation, what are they called as? They are called as conformers. Broadly at this stage for a two carbon system, that is for ethane, we got only two of them, staggered conformer, wherein all hydrogens are visible even from a slant angle or they are one behind the other, they are one behind the other, you can make it out here, then that is called as eclipse conformer. And uh, depending upon the requirement, either we may view the molecule from a slant angle or from head on. If it is slant angle observation, it is called as saw horse formula. If it is head on observation, then it is called as a Newman projection. Hope that is clear. So that completes the second molecule, ethane, after methane. Of course, in the case of methane, I have gone to some more details like uh, four different groups, etc. That, uh, that topic is very, very broad topic. And Anshumers, as you indicate the name of the day, we shall take up subsequently. So to start with, I am trying to construct different molecules. So this is my, suppose if I have to reform here, this is my, if there is a hydrogen here, that is my methane molecule. So in place of hydrogen, I am replacing this another group here. So what is this? This is my ethane molecule. Now in that case, I have to go for one of these hydrogens, either this three or this three, any one of them replaced by another CS3 now such that you get the next molecule propane propane I am repeating suppose imagine I am focusing on this hydrogen if I replace this white sphere with a CH3 let me take the group here suppose imagine I am indicating this hydrogen I am taking out and I am indicating a bond here earlier there was a hydrogen here please remember these are three I am not touching them and these two hydrogens only one hydrogen I am touching here in fact, I want you to appreciate this point because there is a lot of bearing about the environment of a hydrogen or a proton in a molecule. In fact, that is the basis for your MR studies also. Now, if you watch out these three hydrogens and these three hydrogens, I think they don't look different at all. Their environment is same. So you can replace any of these three or any of these three with a carbon attached to three hydrogens. So once, imagine if I take this or this, are you watching what the interesting point? Two carbons on the third carbon is not in a straight line. It is not, it is moving up or down. If I replace this, the hydrogen towards you, let me do that again. If I replace that and form a bond with carbon carbon. Now, how does it look like? I don't think the three carbons are in a straight line. They are in a row, but they are not in a straight line. Are you watching what? Wherever I want to replace, I don't think I will be getting three carbons in a row. Three carbons in a straight line, sorry. They will be in a row, but one of the hydrogens will take it down or up or side differently. That means our molecular shape, let me write again so that you get convinced about what I am talking. So we are in the third molecule called as ethane, sorry, propane. Propane, the textbook representation, first I will write here, carbon, carbon, carbon with all hydrogens attached here. Hydrogens, hydrogens. I will show it also in a minute's time. This is the textbook representation. Propane molecule. I have written here C, three carbons in a row and each carbon I must satisfy the valency of four. So if you watch out the first carbon here, it is attached to three hydrogens here. Then I take the second carbon. Again, there are four lines surrounding that. There is a third carbon. Again, there are four bonds here. So this is CH3. A single bond CH2, single bond CH3. So each of them being a single bond, again there is a scope for rotation. Do you agree to that? We will come to that in a minute's time. But fundamentally I want to impress upon you that the third carbon, wherever, whichever hydrogen is substituted, I don't think it comes in a straight line. It has to move up or down. This is how the molecule looks like. How the molecule looks like. Very interesting. Suppose, let us, to emphasize the point, CC bond or conformers always deal with the exist what's called adjacent carbons. Suppose if I take these two carbons, for example, I will go for eclipsed form. Now, are you watching what this eclipsed form for you? 
these are the two carbons I'm having here. These are two hydrogens, these are two hydrogens. And remember, this hydrogen is blocked or in front of it we have a CH3 group here. This is eclipsed. Right? Now, we'll draw that in a minute's time. My interest in telling you this is very clear. The structures that we encounter in the textbook and the actual structure are bound to be different from each other. You must be able to appreciate that point. And fundamentally, the difference comes because environment of each carbon is three-dimensional, tetrahedron. Therefore, we cannot expect this carbon, the second carbon, which you have taken here, all hydrogens as we written in the textbook format, like this. Again, beware of the fact the structures that you are encountering in the textbook, you must be able to appreciate as they exist. This is given because of the simplicity of representation, but you will be careful as to how the molecule looks like, including be prepared to accept each of the CC bonds. CC bonds, they keep rotating. Of course, CH bonds cannot rotate. Mm -hmm. Are you getting that point? Because there, there is nothing attached to hydrogen here. The idea of conformers is what you must be able to locate hydrogen atoms on the adjacent carbons. How are they placed with reference to each other? That has some bearing once we go to reaction mechanism, which is due course of time. So this completes my stereochemistry second part, wherein we have understood the idea of CC single bond rotation with the help of model, and it does not require a lot of energy with this with a little finger I can move it here. That means the energy required for CC bond rotation is possible, and I can think of different possibilities: staggered, eclipsed, etc. So we'll conclude now. We shall take up stereochemistry 3 tomorrow, going into some more details from butane onwards. Thank you very much.